Welcome back guys! In this episode we will continue with fixing batteries for your battery bank. And we will now take this processed batteries and make them into this. 80 pack cell battery bank. Let's go! When assembling the packs I'm going to assemble them in a configuration of 80 cells. That means 80 cells in each pack and I will have 14 packs. Uh, the reason why I am doing this is because comfortable number for me since that will represent roughly 10 kilowatt hours and I first start with assembling the bottom board like this and then it's just a matter of getting all your tested cells and make sure that you don't have any extra junk on them. Put them down like that and I have the junk in the middle. And when that's done we head over to the top pieces and when I'm doing this as you can see down here I have those ends here and on the top I have it on the other way around and we assemble it and that's the first step so let's solder them so basically soldering the pack is pretty simple but at the same time it's very very important that you have a soldering iron like the one you see on the image or in the video here. You need one with a lot of capacity. So that's very very important. This soldering iron I would consider is way about 200 watt. The roll used is uh, lead based of course with uh, some kind of uh, rest coil inside. It's very very good for this application. So you don't have to do anything before you start, it's just a matter of soldering it on. But at the same time the one I'm using here is a little bit, or actually way too thin. As you can see I have to pull it out every other cell. And if it is that you do fail with one cell, do not continue to heat it. Leave it and go back to it later on. Because you don't... When this is done you need something like this. And it's a pretty simple board. On the, this here, I know that I want to have my bus bar between those parts and I will be using two of them. So what I did is I hooked up a couple of these in series here and laid them out and made sure that the lines you see here is right between those, as you can see. So what I go ahead and do is bend it all the way around here and I get a bus bar that fits. There is no perfect drawings or anything. When it comes to this end here, this end is the end where the bus bar goes out to a terminal ring. So I only go through like that, around and in the middle out. And that I will be showing now, but first we need to create the materials or the strings that we are using for this bus, bus bar type. And here you have it. I'm using standard home household wire, two and a half square millimeter per piece. This one is a, uh, I think it's five wires inside and it's a solid wire. First we need to get this white off it. So you take a normal knife, stick it out a couple of millimeters and be very gentle here so you don't cut yourself because it's very very easily done gentle doing it so you don't cut yourself there is probably tools to do this I don't own one but when you start it it goes pretty fast and what you get here is kind of excellent fuse wire it's not the fuses itself, but it can be used on the other side, so I save those. So basically, put it in your vise, take your knife, and you drag it along the cable while you are tensioning pretty hard. And if you get a flow of this, it will go pretty fast to do. How do I determine thickness of the wire. 
as I said before, I'm going to use 80 amp at most per pack. I'm using six wires. They are two and a half square millimeter to cope with at least 16 amp. Six of those, that should be over 90 amps without any bigger losses. And this is what you get. And this two and a half millimeter time three should be able to cope with three times 15 or 16 amps at least. I always start with a little bit of a bend here, 90 degree. Make sure to do sharp bends. So always over bend them a little bit. One good thing about using this type of bus bar is that this type of length of cables is something you can find on or in most of the electronic shops around because they generally just throw it away when they are done then it's time to add some protection to them I do recommend to add this before doing it And when both are done, it's time to attach them to the battery pack. So you need to make sure they are somewhat aligned. And in my case, I'm using hot glue only. Because that's simple and it works pretty well. And I also add some hot glue inside here. To join us together a little bit. I am fusing every cell to the bus bar and I'm using this type of fuse wire it's rated roughly 5 amps that should be more than enough and for the other side I'm using a little bit thicker wire it's not acting as a fuse but before you are doing this you need to make sure that the fuse wire do meet your demands for instance I do recommend that you do test them out first as you see even though I used this whole range or that whole length of fuse wire, it did melt. And that's the goal of this fuse wire. If you have a dead short, it should melt. At the same time, if we take this shorter or thicker one here, uh, that may not break, but that's kind of okay anyways. It also comes to soldering here. I'm going to show you guys two ways of doing it. The first way would be a very simple way to do it. But it costs a little bit more because you will be using a little bit more. Take your fuse wire like this. Stick your first end down. Go over. Press it down. Hold it down. Make sure you don't have any cold joints. Now the fun work. 
Remove everything that is in between where it shouldn't be. And same goes with those in between here in the middle. And the last step is of course soldering it. We need to do something else and that is to measure every cell so we make sure that we have proper contact and all the cells that we are hooking up now is charged as well. Basically what I'm looking for is that everyone in this case in my scenario is above 410 and we have two cells here that isn't connected properly. Let's take a, let's take a look at them. And this is the finished piece. Almost one kilowatt hour, four volt pack. What's important to understand here is that I have not tied them together. If you want this to be a little bit more rigid, I recommend that you drill a hole in between like that and do a, t a band around it, and that will keep it together. Even though that the fuses will keep together somewhat, you don't want to put stress on them. But in this case, this pack is going to stand on the shelf like this. So that's not a big issue. <laughs>